Hello, hello, hello. My name is Dustin Foray. I'm 27 years old. I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana, and I am a filmmaker. And you're watching Financial Audit. We're all New Orleans stuff. <laughs> Thank you for the gifts. So, 27. Oh, film. That's what you do. What in film? What do you do? Um, so, the thing is about film, um, it's always gig work, so it's pretty much different. Yeah. From time to time to time. We can get salary positions. Look at the guy behind you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Iron. Okay, but mostly, <laughs> yes, yeah, mostly gig work. What, what do you do, though? So, uh, for the most recent gig work, gig work um, I have this one client that I am on retainer with, uh, and I mainly write, edit, direct their oh. marketing commercials, but it's very, Ooh, like... For, like, a company, then? It's very small scale. Okay. Um, I would say on the scale of like your local uh, lawyer, you know what I mean? Okay. It'll be like one call. That's all. <laughs> uh, mm, before that, I, uh, for the year before that, uh, like last year, for example, I was a uh, production assistant in the health and safety department on uh, a handful of like AMC shows that were shooting in town. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Super cool. Um, until the show's over. And yeah. What shows? Uh, Interview with a Vampire is the one that's out right now, okay. uh, which is... I was on that for like a day. Uh, and then the third one that I was on is not out. And so I don't know if I should say. What How's New Orleans for the film industry? Uh, so if if you want to be like a writer, director, auteur type, which is kind of the field that I'm trying to be in, it's very like independent in the sense that it's like you have to make your own work and you have to make friends mm -hmm. that will help mm -hmm. you make your work. Mm -hmm. But if you're like a film worker, like I want to be a grip, I want to be a PA, I want to do hair and makeup, it's fine. Really? Because like the work will come in. You do the thing and then they'll leave. <laughs> you know, they come, they eat, they leave. They come, they shoot, they leave. Yeah. Um, and so as far as it comes to like making your own stuff, it's like, it's fine, but it's like, there's that challenge of like, you're the one who has to make it. Sure. Um, and like editorial, as far as I've noticed in the last 10 years, I have yet to get an editorial job that is linked mm. to Hollywood. Do you Other want to than, stay in New Orleans, or do you have the plans? The classic plan is LA, right? But no, of course, there's multiple places: Georgia, New York, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that's that's one of those things I've been trying to like figure out. Um, well, how well, long have you been doing this? Twenty seven. So, how long have you been doing this? I've been doing this since twenty fourteen. Okay. Did you go to college? Yes. Did you get a degree? Yes, in? I got. Two degrees in film. <laughs> okay. Um, it's a little silly how I did it, though. I went to film school at the University of New Orleans. And then, like, when I wasn't getting work that summer, um, and usually, like, outside of school, I was, like, doing film, but it wasn't, like, Hollywood. It was, like, you know, my friend's short film, which yeah. it pays you an exposure of bucks and, you know, favor tokens. Pizza. And pizza. Um, but... After that summer, after I graduated, still wasn't finding work. So then I was like, let me go to grad school. But instead of going to like AFI or Cal Arts or another Swear school, I, arts. I I went back to the same school for grad school. Well, that's okay. But I, I don't care about that part. But it's just the arts. And trust me, I come from the world of the arts. I got a trombone right there. Music composition, that was my thing. And I mean, I still would love if I had more time to do that. But it's just... People just get so stuck in the school routine and the arts, I swear. Because they get through the bachelor degree and they're like, what am I supposed to do now? Let's just go get the next degree. And they're like, what am I supposed to do now? Let's just go get the doctorate. And it's just, it's just a never-ending cycle. And you went through that world. And that explains the student debts because you have some debts. <laughs> yes, I do. What? Um, well, how much do you make? We didn't even get that. How much do you make right now? Uh, so I, like I said, I mainly got this like one client right now who's kind of like, that's where most of the money come from. Uh, and so on a given month, my average is like five grand. Not yeah. bad. I mean, yeah. that's a, a livable, uh, at, well, okay. Is that, is that after taxes before taxes? Oh, that is 1099 all the way. Okay. So, I mean, 60,000 bucks. I mean, yeah. 60,000 yeah. bucks. That's more than a livable income for and a, then, a lot of places in the United States. So that's great. And you're doing what you love. Or you're in the film thing. So you're doing at least an aspect of what you love. Yeah. I'd say it's adjacent to what I love. It's the, it's the doing the thing in the film field that you love but doing the thing that is required to survive yeah and then hopefully doing on the side more of the things that you love okay but cool five thousand bucks you're setting money aside for taxes yes 
Good. How much? Um, so when I first started doing that, I was doing being super aggressive because the rule of thumb that I've heard from other 1099 film workers was uh, a third, just a third of the paycheck. Mm -hmm. Then, and I need to you know get your opinion on this, but uh, maybe like a month or two ago, I was getting advice from my dad because he was like, what do you mean you can't afford a car? Um, so his advice to me was instead of a third was to save 25%. And I was okay. trying to follow that for the last like month or so, but a part of me is kind of second guessing it. And then also after watching a handful of your episodes, I'm kind of like, who wants a new car? It depends. Well, no, no. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's extra taxes when you're self-employed that you're going to have to pay. Yes. So your overall taxes are going to be a little higher just as an individual person. Mm hmm. And then the tax bracket, thirty. I would do thirty percent because it's a safe, and I don't want to f around with the IRS. And if there's yeah. a little left at the end of the year, okay, bonus. Woo, absolutely thrilling. Other than, okay, twenty five percent. You know, maybe you owe a few hundred dollars, maybe you owe a few couple thousand dollars. But if you don't have that extra couple thousand dollars, then we got to take a look at your situation. I would just rather err on the side of coffin, especially when dealing with the IRS, because mm -hmm. we don't f around with the IRS. You know what else you don't f around with? Hitting that subscribe button because it's so fun to just push it. Then it changes to like a white or something like that. And it's, it's so pleasant. And we're trying to get to 750,000 subscribers. And thank you to everyone who has subscribed so far. So let's start with the debts. Actually, before the debts, what's your financial situation from your perspective? What would you say? Uh, so if I could go back to my origin story, um, the, the thing is... Um, from like 16 on to maybe like a couple of years ago, I honestly, Jeez. not going to lie, lived off of like 400 a month for like the longest time. Wait, until a few months ago? No, not a few months ago. Until like two years ago, pretty two much. Two years ago. Okay. Um, until pretty much right after grad school, which I want to say was like two years ago. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for the longest time, I was living off of like 400 a month, which was like, you know, jack. And, um, off of that, yeah. and then I finished grad school and I start working at like, you know, Photochem and then I start working on TV shows. And then suddenly I'm making like a thousand a week. Um, mm. and, okay. and, and, you know, I know you have this theme of like making a sacrifice now. So you have benefits later. Sure. A part of me was thinking like, oh yeah, I made the sacrifice then and I'm living it up now. And then a At part the of me ripe old age of 27. Yep. Yeah. And so I, a part of me thinks I miscalculated that one. And so a part of me is worried about like, um, what, what's the word, uh, inflation of, uh, lifestyle inflation. Uh, lifestyle inflation. Okay. Yeah. Part of me is worried of that. Um, and then I don't know, I, I get into this like doom scrolling existential dread of like, I'll never be able to afford a house. I'll never be able to afford a car yeah. because a part of me is like, I make five grand, but a part of me is like, but I still can't get a house, you know? Um, and then now I'm just worried because statistically, you know, Louisiana is one of the, like the more poor states. So yes. a part of me is like, if I'm making good money for Louisiana, I'm, I, I have a feeling I'm making jack squat for a state that I want to move to. 60,000 bucks, not necessarily. Okay. But what's the state you want to move to in the city within the states? Like, what are the options? Are they the ones I already said? Yeah, Atlanta. You could make a buy in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, that would Again, it would be um, 60000 there compared to where you are now. Maybe closer to like 40000 in terms mm -hmm. of fueling, you know. Uh, but you could certainly uh, scrape a buy. Even in a city like Austin, you could do. Uh, I did have a friend recommending it. And... The state it's, did, they did do that push for the 200 million tax credit. And thing. it's becoming more of a film place. But yeah, I know a big studio is opening in a town nearby. But either way, it's certainly not on like the Atlanta, LA, New York level. Not yeah. even close. Um, but again, proof that you can make it. And <laughs> hopefully he doesn't hate his job. <laughs> so it exists. What would you give yourself score zero out of 10 right now? Honestly, I have no idea how to gauge any of that. Um, if I, if, I, if I had to go off a of feeling, I'd say, I don't know, five. Okay. Optimistic? Okay. <laughs> That's optimistic. Okay. Well, yeah, I, well, I think for, I mean, $77,000 of debt total. Hmm. I'm, used, I'm used to like, uh, you know, video game scores where like anything below a seven is dog crap, but anything above a seven is like gold. Well, five's <laughs> average. Yeah. I mean, that's five would be the definition of average. Yeah. Right? Zero, zero I mean, if all five Americans are in debt, then I feel so average. Well, not all Americans are not in debt necessarily, but I would say, I mean, yeah, a lot of them, majority. Okay, either way, we have a 
Personal loan? Yes. Why? What is this? Well, possibly. That's what I call a bad business decision that blew up in my face. No. Well, okay. Go ahead. Tell us. Give us the deeds. It's a great story. Um, <laughs> so one thing that some of my friends who are in like camera department, what some of the things they do is they own their kit, right? They own yeah. their cameras. They own their carts. They own all their shit, right? Okay. Um, I, even though I don't work in camera department too often, was thinking, ah, oh, that's a great money-making opportunity right there. And, and then on top of that, I also like... I just shoot, saw the interest rate, I want to die. Sorry, continue. I, I also, you know, I shoot my own shorts, I shoot my own documentaries, so a part of me thought, oh, I can go all Kubrick on this and just own my cameras, that way I can save money on my productions by, you know, cutting the cost of the camera rental, right? Um, okay. And here's where the story lies is uh, I took out the personal loan when I saw that there was a camera that I wanted a um, y'all might be able to find a picture of it. Uh, the Sony FX nine, which usually goes for 16 K. I found it for cameraman made a face. So I know it's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Sony FX nine. Uh, it's like a baby brother to a Venice and an older brother to a, um, FS summon, but either way, uh, it usually goes for 16 K and I found a fully kitted out one for like 9,400 bucks. And I had the money, I had the money, but I just didn't have the ability to like get that money to that vendor. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, if I could take out the loan and then rent it out for 500 a day and then get like one or two features a month. Like, so, you know, I thought I could quote unquote cash flow it, you know what I mean? But like, here's where the tragedy lies um the seller i guess got hacked what the seller got hacked okay so the camera never came well who'd you buy it through <laughs> what platform was this ebay ebay has protections <laughs> yeah eBay. so they sent the money back okay so there is a good there is good news there is good news um they sent the money back but the money was sent back to my credit card because I used the credit card as like a layer of protection. So then after this like whole rigmarole of being on the phone with eBay, being on the phone with Navy Federal, and then being on the phone with Capital One, I eventually got my money back. How much? The total? The 10000 whatever? Uh, not the full 10000 um, Why? I spent 1000 of it on a lens to go with that camera. Okay. I do have the lens. I just don't have the camera. So I paid back $9,400. So there is of this. Yes. Of this. Yes. I paid back 9,400. So now I owe them like maybe 300, 600 bucks. I don't know. I, but it says the total loan amount was 12,565. That part I am confused on. Um, Cause I don't think it is 12,000. Well, it says it is on the statement. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you paid back how much? I paid back 9400 I think there was, with you opening this, I think there was just extra charges and yeah. 9400 9400 has gone back to the lender, yes. Okay, so you're still going to owe, and this is absolutely <laughs> disgusting. Dude, I wouldn't be laughing about it. What? $3,165. Because $3,165 is worse. It, 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 it was certainly worse. I'm glad you paid that back, and I'm glad you didn't just go spend that and keep the loan but it's at 15.44 percent interest rate which i did not learn was a problem until a week ago oh kill me now how 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 okay okay nope, i didn't really didn't learn know. about it's the fine. i didn't learn about the issues of interest rates until like maybe this past month okay there's a lot i'm that's learning insane, along dude. the way that's just an insane interest rate but i'm glad you're learning at some point it matters but with whatever the extra fees were and all this shit and haven't made a payment of any kind. Well, well, I made the $9,400 payment. Yeah, you did. No, that's true. <laughs> you haven't made any of the minimum monthly. I'm curious with the... The hmm. minimum monthly, I want to say, is like 300 bucks. Well, 349 yeah, Three, but I, three I wonder something. what it's going to be with the... It, it'll, I think, the way this is, it's going to still be that same minimum monthly payment and it'll just be paid off quick. Well... If, yeah, because it's a personal loan. So yeah, yeah. Uh, minimum monthly. They're they're not lowering that payment amount. They still want you know, they they're like uh. Oh, trust me, they would actually make more money if they did lower the minimum monthly payment because the interest would accrue longer. But, um, 
Okay. Well, I'm glad we at least took it from twelve thousand five hundred to it's three like, thousand one hundred sixty-five. So I'm celebrating three thousand dollars at fifteen percent interest. Death. Death. Okay. Death. So what is this? Uh, we have. Is this the same thing? Because this is a fifteen point four four percent interest as well. What is this? Um. Oh, I. I I sent you a screenshot of me paying it off the ninety four hundred. Oh, paying the nine forty hundred. Okay, so that's that's like when I paid the ninety four hundred. I think I was trying to send you a before and after screenshot. So confused. How much is owed? If I'm right, and it's not three thousand dollars. <laughs> well, there is a principal balance of like seven hundred bucks, but then there was that extra. There was that extra free thousand. So I don't know what it is. You're gonna have to figure that out. I hope I hope it's only seven hundred, not three thousand. That said, though, like if it is only a few hundred bucks and it's paid off in a couple of months, the the kick in the nuts is, um, yeah, I still end up paying like an extra few hundred bucks on yeah. interest that didn't need to exist. No, I know that that sucks. <laughs> you took out a personal loan to do this, but hey, you know, ever ever touched um, ever touched the hot oven as a kid just to see? I touched the hot oven as an adult because I was <laughs> dumb. Because I always forget the oven's hot. The pan, the pan. I always touch the hot pan. That's my thing. I touch the hot iron, you know, the mm. iron the clothes. <laughs> okay. So student loans because you wanted to go to film school and then we wanted to go to film school plus afterwards. Yes. Great. $61,749, but they're all federal. You have no private student loans, correct? No private student loans. Good. Thank Almost you. took private student loan. And then coincidentally, I guess an idiot savant in me kind of um, took the government loans. Good. These range anywhere from 4 to 6% when I was looking through them. So, mm-hmm. With this, these minimum payments are going to And this be... is better than some of my friends because uh, some of well, them... your yeah. friends... Yeah. Some of them had to, you know, take out loans to go to undergrad, and I only had to take out loans for grad school. Oh, why? Parents or scholarships? Um, my or? mom... Well, I did get... The... This was only grad school? Yeah. So oh. my mom took out tops... I mean, no, I got tops. I was a smart kid, got tops. And then my mom had some mutual fund that she made when I was like two that matured. And then I, you know, could only spend it on college. But then like the part was cool. it only lasted until like the last year. So hey. then my dad had to pay for the last like semester. That's cool. Well, I'm glad they at least did that. Um, so great. You know, I wish grateful. you what else? Because you don't need a degree to do film. I wish you would have learned all that stuff without the degree and then used the money that was saved up to... Get the more the, the more I look back in time, the more I'm like a part of me agrees that like film school is not the most necessary thing. But no. you know what it is? I think in my particular case is I feel like the education that like YouTube had in particular was still like catching up, still catching okay. up and building. Like if you look at like Film Riot, for example, and what they looked like when I was starting film school, it's like nothing compared to but how even they just are today. like getting like the most uh, grunt work craft jobs and just working on the scene as like someone who just brings food around to everyone i catch yourself listen no i get it there is a lot that you learned and a lot you can learn there's a lot i learned in composition school as well but i also know if i just paid for private lessons instead of going through everything else like i don't know what the equivalent is on the film side but like i could have walked away with the same thing been paid a fifth overall I mean, I don't know if you if you would like the advice that I was told instead of going to skill, film school, take out a personal loan and make a film. So I don't know. I think borrow, the uh, I think borrow. the interest would have been different. <laughs> well, the interest would have been different. Hopefully, the cost would have been less. But I don't know. You would have been. It would have been the first time you do it. So maybe you would have ballooned the whole thing. Who knows? I don't like that advice. I would rather go do the grunt work and like make those relationships and stuff. No, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I mean, the fact that uh, film school was able to be paid for, mm-hmm. I think undergrad, sure, do it. It was paid for. Yeah. That's awesome. Then you went to grad school. That was stupid because you borrowed for it. I would have went and got some experience. And I didn't even go to like AFI. <laughs> AFI is one of the, you know, one of those schools where it's like you get in, it's like just the fact you went there, like you met the connections that could like get you. I, I, there's certainly certain well, things well, that depend, but the vast majority of the time in any study that's been done on the topic shows that people with the same degrees from any institutions end up making the same. But there are very select instances, and if that might be, I can't speak on it, so maybe, but whatever. I'm just trying to think of what the minimum monthly payment for this is probably going to be. I think it's going to be about 
Six hundred fifty bucks a month, maybe. Uh, oh, for student loans or for that personal loan? For the student loans. Oh yeah, they called me up once and said it was going to be like five hundred something. They well, they said five hundred something. Yeah, but this oh, was like a lady over the phone like two years ago in the middle of the pandemic. Well, I guess it depends also on like what kind of repayment you have. Is it on the traditional? Did you set up in a different way? It's a. Uh, I think a part of me had a hunch that like the you know, pay a couple of bucks a month plan was going to be the worst idea ever. Yeah. So I had a hunch and I uh, went with like a 10 year program because I just didn't like the idea of being like 60 and still paying the student loan just didn't sit right with me. So yeah, it's like some deal where like they're going to start with like 500 something, but then within eight years, it's going to be like way more. Um, no, no, we're not doing that. That's stupid. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the way you're going to do it as a big boy mm-hmm. is you're just going to be like, no, we're just going to actually do the f- traditional, even it out across the 10 years. And that's what you're going to do starting in August. So it's still 10 years though. How's that? How's that pan out? Well, the way that they have done it for you, I don't know what that, what that one's called, but they're clearly doing it in a way where it's 10 years. Yes. But instead. Okay. Well, let me let me figure out one second. Ten years. It's gonna be like a ghost oh. that says "boo" eight years from now. <laughs> yeah. So, in the one you're going to do, and what it should be, the traditional ten year about six hundred fifty five, which I think is pretty close to what I said, isn't it? What did I say? I think it's six six hundred right? and some change. 600? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, you're getting pretty good at guessing that. So. What they're going to do is they're going to have like $500 for now, and then it's going to be like $800 towards the end, just so it pays yeah. it off in the same amount, which is stupid. Don't do that. That's dumb. Let's just do 655 because we're actually going to do it in a different way more than that anyway. But mm-hmm. call them back and get that set up because, no, let's not be stupid about it. Let's not overcomplicate it. So this is going to be 655 until it's paid off. Might be a little more if the interest is higher. Might be a little less if the average interest is lower. Okay. Well, I bet that checking account balance is different now, though, that what? you've paid. Because I see here 15133 but I assume some of that was the $9,000 that came back. Yeah. Also, I think the way Capital One structures their statements is it has... Oh, wait. Never mind. Oh, yeah. See, it has the all accounts thing. But yeah, this 15000 Yeah, that was the account that I put the loan in. Yes, you were correct, sir. And then the one with zero dollars in it, I opened up a new account to where the plan was whatever I earned off the camera or whatever I saw uh, siphoned from my income, I was going to put into this account Hold to specifically. Phone. Yeah. But none of that's happening anymore because I repaid most of the loan and I'm just going to have to siphon the rest oh. from my income. You know what I mean? Pull out your phone. Pull out your phone. Oh, pull out the phone. I and tell saying. me what's in your checking account right now. Honestly, I don't know what you'd be mad at more last month's or this month's. <laughs> But yeah, let me open this. Hold on. Okay, so this account was the one that had the loan in it. Whoopsies. Because I was trying to keep it separate from my. Um, but that money is available. That money is straight up available. What money? That five thousand, eight hundred ninety-four. That is my uh, my taxes. Good. I'm glad you're doing that. Don't put it in checking. Let's put it in a high yield, though. What's the rate you're getting on this 360 performance savings, you know? Of which you have $3,000 in, which I'm happy. Um, I want to say it was like three and a half, three point okay. five, some somewhere in that ballpark. I know you usually recommend uh, SoFi. Just, that's new because the rates went up and they have bonuses when you sign on. But yeah. absolutely, yeah, I have that link to get the bonus in the description because everyone should be getting 4.3% or higher. Open that again. Oh, God. I need to see what's in these. Uh, so in your regular checking, of which we saw $15,000, not even close. It was like 1500 right? In your checking? In your regular? My regular checking, checking? This one right here. Okay, so 1862 That's because I just got paid yesterday. So it's usually less? No. Um, it's, it's usually in this ballpark between okay. like 18 and like 2,800. And then what's this, what's this other checking? 360 checking, 200 bucks. What's the point? That was the one that was going to siphon the loan gotcha. repayment. I'm happy with the 3,158 in uh, uh, savings, even though the yield's a little lower than we'd like to see. I'm happy with that. Yes. What is that? Just 
try to get you an emergency fund type situation? Oh, no. You're going to love the story about my emergency fund. Um, I have $12,000 in an emergency fund. And uh, shout out to Madeline, my financial advisor that I just found out does financial advising. I just found that out the other day. Um, I bought a CD with a 5.08% APY and put $12,000 in that, to which... Uh, in my meeting with her last week, she yelled at me for doing that. Okay. Where is it now? It's in that CD. Uh, it's four months and I already followed her advice. And once the four months is up, it's going to come right back to me. Okay. So you have an additional 12,000 on top of that 3000 we saw. Yes. Okay. And that 12,000 is when's that four months done. Hmm? When's that four months done? Uh, like September, I think. It's fine. September, when August. You get 4.3 in high yield. Like, may as well just keep it there, dude. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, no, uh, you might have fun explaining to the audience, but like, uh, she explained to me that ACD is a terrible place to keep an emergency fund. Because well, if an emergency arises, exactly. She said. <laughs> you want your emergency fund to be accessible at all times. So just put it in a high yield. Now, in the 360 checking, oh, that was just the, the whatever checking, so that doesn't matter. Things were just, yeah, to the loan and transfer back and forth. Nothing really happened in here. Now, in the regular checking, uh, Patreon membership. Yes. Mine. Hmm? Mine. I think. Mm. I it? have more than one. Mm. Okay. I am a creative, patron of the arts. <laughs> creative Cloud makes sense. What you need to do since you're 1099 you need to create a little LLC on the side, have some business checking. How we get that 30% tax down so you pay less? So you're going to be writing off stuff. You should be uh, writing off that Adobe Cloud. I do have the Keeper app, which lets okay. me write off stuff. And I was able to write off stuff last year. I don't know if you have the tax return that I sent you. But, um, but I did write off some stuff last year, and I'm writing off Good. stuff this year. Come to Good. find out, though, an LLC would have probably been a wiser way of yeah easier writing. pass through and everything. Then we not three hundred bucks. You know with that one. Uh, Vidivo, Vidivo, twenty four bucks. Stock footage. Okay, again, right offable. So in Google Storage, probably write that off. Yep. Roku for AMC networks. Um. Well, I was on interview with the vampire, and they wouldn't like you know let me watch it for free, so I had to pay him. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fine. And then for performance savings, yeah, that's where we saw 12000 So big movement there. So, okay. Okay, cool. A lot of that stuff is just right offable. Good. And then everything else is just like transfers back and forth. Now, on this credit card, do you ever hold balances over or do you pay them off? I pay them off every month. That's what I was seeing, so I'm happy to see that. Good. I have a perfect payment history. Um, and then I forgot what the other important things were. Um, utilization is a big one. Utilization. Oh, derogatory um, marks. And I don't have derogatories. My, uh, utilization is usually between nine and 11%, but you paid off every time. So it doesn't really matter. Pay off every time. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's just, just got it's a CLI. So that's great. $1,412 were purchased though. Yes. What are we doing here? We had a Klarna thing. What are you klarna -ing? Do you even know? <laughs> uh, no, I wait. I um, fifty three bucks a payment. What are you clarning? Oh yeah, I remember this one now. Um, to spoil a surprise, um, I was, concert tickets. They were concerts. Oh, is that a surprise? Oh, I was surprising my girlfriend with concert tickets. Oh, is she watching this? Probably. You better tell her before two days from now. <laughs> Because our backlog is very minimal. <laughs> uh, Wayfair, we probably don't need to be doing that, whatever that furniture was. Uh, again, Klarna and B&H phone. Was it the $1,000? Mm-hmm. That's the lens. Okay, well, at least you can write that off. Well, that was the big purchase of that. Um, Honestly, I, when I look at my, I, because I got rocket money, right? When I look at the, um, when I look at my pie chart at the end of every month, usually the thing f***ing me over is it's the fact that I'm like spending money on gear and I guess I'm not saving in the most adequate way to sustain those gear purchases. You're investing things back into the business, but with where the majority of your money is coming from the business, you're not making more or getting this equipment. Yeah. So it's like, eh, it doesn't make sense. I don't know. And then on this other card, five hundred six thousand purchases. Again, I'm good with I mean tax write the tax write-off part's nice, but okay. And here 
Every plate, every plate, every plate. CC Bill. What's CC Bill? Um, I think that was like another like artist or what have you, or I was just like buying crap from them. Give yourself money before you give them money going forward. (laughs) Including if that's my Patreon. I'd rather you get out of debt first. AI uh, stock. Okay, again, you want to do maybe a business credit card because you've shown that you are a credit card person. I'm happy to see that. So congratulations. I'm so blessed. Yeah. Uh, You've paid off. You never missed a payment. Good. So, but it's a business credit card. Do things pass through LLC. Easier just tracking everything. And uh, you can reduce your taxable income as well. Hulu, don't need that. Google Mealtime, every plate. You know, it's funny. I tried to cancel Mealtime, and it just won't go away. It's like a... Well, report it. Then. It's report like a herpes it. it's or something. Card. Report it. Okay. Every plate, well, Spotify, Netflix, Mods, Extreme... What are we looking at? Oh. What are we looking at? Oh, Nexus Mods? Yeah, Nexus. Oh, Nexus. I read that as Netflix. You, you, uh, you play games. Do you play Skyrim? No. Oh, I did, do but it's mod? also been out for like 15 years. Yeah, it still has a big modding scene. So I use uh, Nexus. Uh, I download like entire mod packs with like thousands of mods. <laughs> and with the membership, I can download it in like 20 minutes instead of like 20 hours. Though? Right now, I don't know. And Patreon again. And then the Rocket Money, we're good. I approve that. Good. Worth it. Every play, every play, every play. We could be doing more affordable versions of food. But sometimes I wish you had a thing where you could let a you could look at like six months of our statements, so then you could see all the terrible decisions I made during Mardi Gras. Well, I'm <laughs> glad it wasn't this month. I like to, <laughs> I just like to look at one month because I just I think it can reflect well. Um, Mm-hmm, Plus, it's mm-hmm. just easier. But either way, okay, $225 on another card spent in here, Life Storage and Bachi BCBS Valet. Um, let's see. So Bachi, Bachi, I want to say, was a Vietnamese joint. Uh, B, BCBS, uh, Blue Shield, Blue Cross. That's my health insurance. Oh, I'm which, I don't know. They kind of suck. I don't know why I'm paying health insurance. Health insurance you should have. Whether it's that, I don't know. Then a thousand three hundred spent on another card. So already we're gonna we're spending a lot of money. Even if someone's tax deductible, you're like, what income is there to deduct at this point? Oh jeez, AMC online. Why AMC, dude? A- oh, online. Okay, that that explains this it. I was thinking of like AMC theaters. No, that is AMC theaters. Oh, gross. Go to a real movie theater. AMC- I do. I go to the Britannia and the Broad as well. I go to all of okay. them. Okay. Well, AMC just sucks. I swear. It's just like the... Just, I'm trying to think of something that doesn't insult a massive group of people. It's just trash. It's just loud children throwing popcorn. It's just the crap movie theater chain. Alamo Draft House, man. Well, oh, we, we don't have those. those in their what? Just, we don't have Alamo. But you're one state away. Okay. We have uh, AMC... And then two local theaters. Uh, yeah, I was going to name Britannia. local theaters. They don't matter. But uh, usually, usually um, I know the, the Alamos are on. Well, and then the y- usually the artsy crap and, that I like to see, nobody goes see. So I have a wonderful time. It's super quiet. AMC Online, trash. Bullshit. Uber or trip, trash. Bullshit. Uber trip, trash. Bullshit. Uber trip, trash. Bullshit. Starbucks. Mm-mm. Wait, Starbucks. The oh, go you- to editor. Okay, again. Right off and McDonald's and Dots Dinner and Amazon and Amazon and Dots Dinner and Velvet Shoes. Don't need that. And Suvu Shoes. Amazon. MC Online. Again, gross. Uno Filmmakers. Maybe that's tax deductible. And Uber Trip and Uber Trip and Uno Filmmaker again. And Nayax Vending. So the uh, Uber Trip, McDonald's, there is Coca-Cola, a... New Orleans, and Uber Trip. You know what's funny? I did see the Coca-Cola one the other day, and I was like, where the hell is a Coca-Cola $5? I don't get it. But either way, the story behind the Uber trips was I uh, my car died a month and a half ago. And so oh, in order geez. to do anything, I had to Uber everywhere. Okay, for temporary, I'm okay with that. Uh, your insurance? Car, you have car insurance? Yes. They didn't cover a rental? I don't know. try? I didn't even know that's an option. That's a thing. <laughs> 
That's Depending a thing. Depending, if it's in the shop, and depends on your insurance. Oh no, it wasn't happen. in the shop. It was dead. It was dead, dead. It was a dead car. Okay, it's, it's gone they, for good, and I had to get a new it? one. What killed it? Um, so the mechanic told me that like a day or two before it died, um, I guess coolant or water or something started leaking into the oil and then made it chocolate milk, and did, which kills it right away. And did insurance give you a payout? Have you even reported this? I mean, it's it was like a 20-something-year-old car. I didn't know that was a thing. Oh, I don't know. It just it depends on the situation. It depends yeah. on the situation. I didn't know that it's was good a thing. To, it's good to at least pursue every option possible. I didn't it wasn't know like these were wreck. options. Well, it wasn't like a wreck or anything, so I, I don't know for this either. But, okay. Okay. And then we also do have an Edwards Jones. So we have 6,039. What is this, a Roth IRA? Yes, Roth IRA. Good. You clearly have not been maxing it out. But we did a what would at least be worth a year of maxing out. You want to max it out minimum six thousand five hundred dollars right now every year, and that should go up with inflation. Yes, <laughs> it's growth focused, medium to high risk. Good with that. Let me. Try, I'm trying to figure out what it's in. Oh, I oh, also American have global growth portfolio A and A and allocation. Out to, I don't really know, but I also have um, a Fidelity account brokerage account with How like much? ETFs and stuff. How and much? at the moment it's valued at 1700 and some change. Okay. We're certainly behind for your age for retirement. Uh, but I'm, I'm already glad. behind. Well, yeah. I mean, you're behind from day one at 18. If you have zero things need to start contributing, but, uh, but I am happy that things have started. That's the good sign. Mm -hmm. Things have started. We can at least do things with that. And, we spent 54 bucks on gas, but then there was Ubering, so we can't calculate your gas bill off of that. Food and everything. Mm. I mean, before the car died, my rule of thumb was I put in 30 bucks, regardless if it was a good amount of gas or not. <laughs> and then I just made $30 work. Okay. Well, honestly, most of your expenses were business expenses, and then there was other things. You don't go crazy. You don't go out to eat a lot or anything. Like, there was some bull there. You have that uh, you meal delivery service. You have that meal delivery service looks like, so that yeah. takes up a lot. So the crazy thing about the meal delivery service, uh, because my dad was trying to warn me against it, um, before I did that, uh, me and my girlfriend would go grocery shopping, and pre-pandemic, our budget was like 90 bucks a week. Um, Post-pandemic, that same grocery list became $150, exact same grocery list. So then we opted for the meal kit thing, and then, you know, I'll cook. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I'll cook. Hmm. The math doesn't necessarily... Mm -hmm. I'm curious. Okay. It also depends where and what you got, obviously. Some things were hit. Like, eggs weren't even just hit fully from inflation. Eggs had, like, one of the biggest avian flus we've had as mm. well. So it's just the production of eggs were drastically down. Mix that with inflation, rough. So, but actually, eggs have started to come back down to what would be normal with the inflation that we've seen. Either way... 3,443 is what you spent on the cards and that's not even including the checking account and then what you have after you set money aside for taxes isn't much to work with. So I'm surprised we even have gotten that much in retirement. I'm surprised we've gotten to $15,000 in savings. Yeah, I just have it automatically hey, set why up. didn't you get the, 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 the $10,000 plus lens camera and everything from the $15,000 in savings? Why didn't you do that? Why'd you go into debt for it? Well, that's the emergency fund. I don't... Well, good. I'm glad. You I don't want to f with the emergency I fund. I would still rather you take from savings than go into debt, though. I, I don't want to f the emergency fund either. So there was logic behind it. There was logic behind it, but and and then honestly, even when the car died, I had the option to just drain the fund and like fix the car. Yeah, that like, would equate to emergency. But a part of me was like, was it really an emergency? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Well, in most American cities that are not walkable and pedestrian friendly at all and require you to have a car, which is like the worst American tax for the middle class and poor Americans. Yeah. yeah sometimes it is an emergency. Yeah. What's your rent? Uh, so the rent is, the rent is $300. What? And then I consider uh, that that uh, life lock or whatever, that storage unit, another What's rent. that? That was like 70-something bucks. Why is your rent so cheap? Um, my brother bought the house that I was renting uh, a while ago. Okay, sure. And I guess he just doesn't want a cash flow. All right. Uh, yeah, nice of him. Sure. What's your, what's your car situation now? Nothing? 
Um, no. So I, uh, I got a, uh, Volvo V50 2008 hatchback. For how much? Um, actually it was, a, I guess, interesting story, but a family friend was willing to give it to me if I like paid for all the transfers and all that crap. Mm-hmm. But when it got to me, um, some things were not up to date. And so I had to spend like a thousand bucks on top of that. To, but, you uh, did, but no debt, no debt, all cash. So you own it. Own it all cash. Yeah. Beautiful. That's good. Car insurance, monthly basis. I want to say around 200, give or take. How much on gas usually? Well, this is a new car. I mean, like new to me car. So I don't know like what that number is going forward, but me got. but like on the Highlander, I was doing, you know, 30 bucks a week and that, and that was like, whether it's full or not, I was just putting 30 Let's bucks call it 100 in. bucks a month. You drive a lot? Um, yes and no. There's times where I'm driving a lot and then times where I'm not. So like if I'm on like a production, then yeah, I'm driving a lot. But if I'm not and I'm just kind of working from home with the client I got. Well, if you're uh, on a production, you're making more because of it. So that's okay. So let's just say a hundred bucks to keep us on an average. Mm-hmm. Now I'm giving you for food, 300 groceries. Is it just you? Uh, no, it's me and my girlfriend. Does she contribute to the grocery budget? Uh, we try. What? We try. What does that mean? Um, what, what the, well, like her, her thing was... Um, does she make money? Now she does, yes. Good. Okay, your portion is $200 that you're allowed to contribute to the overall grocery bill. Okay, cool. And what you're allowed to contribute to the toilet paper bill and other things that are necessary to get the house in order, 75 is what you're allowed to contribute to the pile. She can contribute more if she wants. That's what you're allowed to contribute. For sure. What other minimum monthly expenses do you have? Health insurance. What's your health insurance? That was like 80 something bucks a month. But when I signed up for, for that, um, that's when I was making like, I signed. So, so here's, Affordable health care. Yeah, I did like the it's, Obamacare thing. Yeah. And so I'm pretty sure when I signed on, I gave them a number that's lower than what I'm making now because yeah. I couldn't predict the future. You wouldn't qualify for it now. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to get somehow, and I don't know where to go to fix that. Well, you should probably contact them because I don't want you to get in terms of owing back money. But we're going to switch it to about a $300 a month health care, health insurance. It's probably what you should, nah, 250 bucks. <sighs> It sucks. Just do it. Trust me, it's worth it. Trust I, me, if anything happens, it's worth it, dude. I get that. I guess this is the part where I get like confused, and I always ask everyone that I talk to about it. It's like, okay, well, I'm paying for that big health insurance, and I'm putting into like, um, you know, the retirement and all that, and so it's like all this money is getting siphoned away everywhere. Mm-hmm. Then how do I save for like some of the things that I? you know, need or want like a house we or a vacation. That. Like how is that even no, we, feasible? Uh, Especially with, we'll with, that. with, you know, the, 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 you know, the grand danger that is coming that, you know, winter is coming with student these student loans. loans. We'll go through it. We'll, we'll go through it. Any other minimum the expense you can think of. Um, and by the way, yes, you could set extra money aside for things you want without having health insurance. Mm-hmm. Well, then a medical thing happens and you don't have it, and then you're forced to go hundreds of thousands of dollars into debt. Yeah. And everything's. So that's why we have it. Yeah. No, I know. I get having health it's insurance because it's, it's just insurance. the one that I have kind of sucks. Like it doesn't even cover my meds. Yeah, but it probably protects you in case of a big expense. Yeah. Look at it. Shop around. Shop around. You're going to be shopping around. I'm just putting $250 to give us an average for what I think you would probably do. Mm-hmm. Nothing else that you can think of? So with everything combined, your monthly bill. Oh, and then your minimum monthly debt payments as well. Yeah. Six fifty five for the student loans starting in just a couple months, then three forty nine for that personal loan. So minimum in order to survive, and it could be less depending on what that personal loan, because both statements show different things. So you just need to figure that out. Mm-hmm. But two thousand one hundred ninety nine is what I have. So what you're gonna do? If there is $3,165 left on that personal loan, mm-hmm. you are going to cut a check from your savings immediately. Well, what's in there? $3,000? Uh, the savings that's not in the CD? Yeah, yeah about 3000 and some change. Okay, you're going to cut 1000 from that, and you're going to put it towards that. And, mm-hmm. and then we're going to try to pay it off beforehand anyway. Mm-hmm. But we're keeping at least 2200 set aside for a one-month emergency fund, just in case anything happens. Lose your job. Leave I mean, that said, though, that CD that I have, it's uh, non-committal or something like that. It's non... 
Yeah, you won't get the. Well, actually, like they don't they don't f me over if I take the money now. I know you just won't get the interest. You won't get the winnings. Oh, but with what that interest rate is compared to the fifteen percent, so you're right. I would take from that, and I would immediately pay off the personal loan if it's at three thousand one hundred sixty-five. Now, if it's at that like six hundred bucks or whatever, you know. Then again, there's some confusion around it. Take from the savings you have now, pay mm-hmm. that off immediately, mm-hmm. and then just pull from the CD once it's up, and you can walk away with that interest. So, what we do from there? The student loans and how the math works on this is anything that's above four mm-hmm. percent. Once that starts, and you'll be able to see the individual loans, you're going to pay them off as quick as you can. And with the five thousand dollars you have on a minimum, I don't know, so pay basis, higher than the minimum. You're saying. Uh, well, like if it's four hundred, pay seven hundred. Well, know? you lose one thousand five hundred dollars a month set aside for taxes. So with that, you have three thousand five hundred, and then two thousand one hundred ninety nine following my budget. You have one thousand three hundred dollars left. We're gonna say half of the sixty one thousand dollars is above. It's six uh, is above four percent. So thirty thousand dollars, let's say, is above four percent. Thirty thousand dollars. And yes, you're just putting extra towards it. The extra thousand three hundred dollars that you have a month would take you twenty three months, two years, two years of living on the hard budget. But you're also working all the side gigs you can. Anything, anytime you are not working this job mm-hmm. and you don't have another film job, you're doing like Uber Eats, you're doing, you're working at a coffee shop like every other. Uh, aspiring film person being a waiter i don't care you're doing something you're bringing money and then work those extra jobs as much as you can bring in as much money cut that down from two years to a year and a half cut it down from a year and a half to uh to to pay one off year student loans is yeah, that the we're... student loans that are above four okay. percent everything else is minimum monthly payment so again the personal loan's gone at this point yeah and now what you can do is when your savings come back when your savings comes back out of the cd of the thirty thousand dollars Again, we set $2,200 aside. Everything else goes to paying off that $30,000. That is about four. That is above 4% on the interest. Student loans that are 4%. Okay. Yeah, I got lost at some, somewhere in the great but you got, it I got now, lost. Okay, so the 30000 is the student loans. Well, your student loans are 61000 but I'm guessing about 30000 of them are above 4%. Gotcha. Those are the ones that we're attacking. And you'll see them individually laid out in your student loans. Mm-hmm. So we're going crazy by taking the money that's from the CD. As long as we have $2,200 set aside, everything else is going to pay off the personal loan and then paying off the higher interest student loans. Mm -hmm. Now, you're doing that, and because you're putting some of the savings towards that, I think it's going to take a year even if you don't have extra money because you do have a good chunk of money coming from that CD. Work extra jobs, make it nine months then. Fine, that's cool. Now, what we're doing from there is we just include the minimum monthly payments of the additional uh, 30000 that are less than 4% 4, 4 or less. 4, 4, 4, 5, 4% 4 or less. And that's going to be about $325 a month. Put that in your needs category. Your needs category, you'll budget out at no more than 50%. Make it less than 50% if you can, but no more than 50%. So rent mm-hmm. and health insurance and your groceries and toilet paper spending and gas, of which... You might be able to deduct from your business, maybe. Work with a tax expert on that. And car insurance and all this good stuff and storage is in your 50% or less. No more than 50%, though. Mm -hmm. And then 20% of your income, minimum, minimum on a monthly basis. Minimum. On a monthly basis, $541.67 a month is going to your Roth IRA. So you max it out every year. Okay. Now what you can do beyond that is put the rest of the 20% in like a brokerage or anything like that, or put the rest of the 20%. Oh, let's see. Up in net is 3,500 again. So $700 should be invested on a minimum monthly basis. So you have an extra 150 bucks there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That can go to save for a house. That can go to save for a new car. That can go to save for whatever you want your savings. Or you could put it in a brokerage just to have more money invested in the market. Mm -hmm. Now, that other 30%, you can spend on fun. That being said, in my mind, so that you can 
uh, know that you'll retire a millionaire, I do 20% on fun, 30% on investing or saving for a house. Mm-hmm. If you want to save for a house, take 10% from fun and put it towards a house savings. Mm-hmm. And that way you'll get there in like five to 10 years for like a 10%, 20% down payment. Okay. And then the fun spending, you can put that on the stuff you want that you mentioned about. So you can totally get it. Yes, money goes aside to things like health insurance and uh, retirement savings. But you should still have about 20 to 30 percent of your income left over once we're done with all these things. So just put it where you want. Mm -hmm. Just fun spending. And maybe that fun spending is extra film stuff that you can just write off anyway. So Okay. Sounds all well and good. Um, But what I heard is uh, not getting a house for five to ten years. Is that you don't have to rush, dude? Why well, everyone wants to everyone on the show and anyone I come across the moment they get the idea that they want to get a house they feel like they have to get a house immediately dude it's an asset for many people it's their largest asset which is not a good thing because people should save up more in the stock market anyway but in terms of their personal residence but dude it's fine it's totally fine if you get it when you're 32 it's totally fine if you get it when you're 35 it's totally fine if you get it when you're 37 that's putting you on the right track still Mm -hmm. if we're not getting a personal residence till we're 50 okay then you know i'm i'm taking them back a little or even our mid 40s i'd want to get a personal residence by at least 40 you know you're totally okay you're in a great rent situation now take advantage of it as long as you can in save as as much money on the side as you can this 300 dollars a month thing dude Mm-hmm. That makes it that you can go hustle, go go crazy for a bit. And then if you go crazy and pay off the high interest student loans and the personal loan, save up a fully funded emergency fund again, which I forgot. I'm sorry. After you pay off the high interest student loans and the and the um, personal loan, you have to save up a fully funded emergency fund, and then you're allowed to do the 50, 30, 20 rule. Mm-hmm. You can't until you have a fully funded emergency fund, which will be about in your current situation, twenty thousand. Yeah, because you have to take care of so many things like health insurance and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, fifteen to twenty thousand dollars, save that up, and then you can do the 50, 30, 20, 50 percent on needs, thirty percent on wants, twenty percent on savings. But you're at minimum maxing out the Roth IRA. Okay, so yes, you might have to wait a bit for the house, but that's okay. You're going to be on the right track. You're going to be a millionaire if you follow this. If you start getting weird and do like an FHA loan, and all of a sudden your mortgage payment is like sixty percent of your income, dude, we're just going to be around and you're Mm. not going to get to a place that is healthy or good financially well do you foresee me the possibility of going to one of the major hubs anytime uh soon even if i was like let's talk talk about that goal where do you want to go to one of the major hubs okay sure sure i mean that's the thing i've I've kind of been on the fence about all of them and up into the end of the mic and if you sorry (laughs) if you take this experience and you take it to a more expensive city. I would like you to be doing what you're doing now and mm-hmm. making more money, which will hopefully compensate for that. Now, yep. those places are much more expensive if we're talking like L.A. especially. So you're probably going to have to do side hustles and, and everything until you make it. What I would do, minimum before you move to one of those hubs, personal loans gone and the higher interest student loans, anything above 4% is gone and you have a fully funded $20,000. Mm-hmm. Once you have that in a couple years or so, because you have so much saved up now that you can throw towards it, which is awesome. In a couple of years, one and a half to two years, yes, you can move to those, but only after you accomplish that. Now, because life will be more expensive and you probably won't make more money right away, getting a house will take longer. But if you can go make a lot more money because of the experience you have and because those industries demand more money there, then mm-hmm. heck yeah. Go for it. Then houses are more expensive. So there's always cost and gifts. But yes, you could move there in like a year and a half to two years, depending on how much you want to hustle now. Hustle now and you can make it quicker. Yeah. If only the uh, writer strike <laughs> was uh, not going. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Yes. I forgot to mention that earlier. Um, yeah, the writer strike. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of why I'm in the situation with the client that I have is um, I was fine like not having them as a client. But then the writer strike happened, so then now I'm kind of like you're relying on it. Yeah, I it's and actually that was one of the things I was going to ask you. Like, hey, in your opinion, uh, can I uh, drop this client anytime soon? I kind of figured no. you would say no. Yeah, not now until you have something lined up. Yeah, you're allowed to take more risk once these bad debts are gone and you have a fully funded emergency fund. Then you can take more risk, like moving to a different, like one of the mm-hmm. hubs. We just can't do it now, man. I'll line yeah. something else up if you want to. Yeah, for sure. But not now. No, nah, I should be like that stand-up comedian and be like, I don't care about the money. <laughs> Do you remember that guy? 
Mm-hmm. I was watching his bit. Uh, they were kind of roasting him on Reddit, but uh, there was this dude. He was like, "I'm going to be a famous comedian." Oh, <laughs> oh, on my show? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I thought you were talking about just a comedian in general. Yes, I remember that. I forgot the guy's name. I'm sorry, oh. guy. But um, <laughs> oh, what's on the tip of my tongue? <laughs> okay, he's cool though. Uh, no, he way. seemed like a really cool guy, and honestly, I kind of wanted to come on and defend him a little bit. I'll be like, "No, I totally get his like mindset. No, I get the logic. It's just wrong." <laughs> Any final thoughts? Um, God, those questions always put me on the spot. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I have any final thoughts. Is there any room for any equipment at any time? Um, uh, yeah, budget? once you're done with all your bad debts and have a fully funded emergency fund, then absolutely. Okay, fair, fair, fair. Then yeah, I guess that was the final thought. Unless it's absolutely required for you to do the thing that brings in income. But mm-hmm. don't justify. Don't mm-hmm. Yeah, don't uh, don't take out a loan for uh, a good eBay deal that wasn't a good eBay deal. So for Dustin and his New Orleans Hammer Financial score, spending on a budget, this is, I think, one of the better ones that we've seen in this category. He doesn't go crazy, at least not on this month when it comes to spending out. So six out of ten for that. There's still too much spending for the situation, but debt not good especially that stupid personal loan it's gonna be a two out of ten there retirement definitely behind for the age still something two out of ten emergency fund actually quite pleased with where, uh with where it is not with where the money is in the cd because that's not an emergency fund but six out of ten definitely not where it needs to be but still good progress and a lot of it has to be used for the debt anyway real estate eventually as we talked about not now zero out of ten hammer financial score for now dustin three out of 10. Check out all the resources that I use or would use where I in a specific situation in the description below, like a very high yield savings account and getting a free $5 when you sign up for Acorns and other things like that, like getting a better paying job in tech like course careers. Don't forget to follow my Instagram and Twitter. Thanks.